नमस्कार एंड गुड इवनिंग टू दियर्स ऑफ पंडित रविशंकर म्यूजिक फाउंडेशन वी रिग्रेट फॉर द डिले ड्यू टू टेक्निकल एरर Today we are in our 69th episode of Reflections, celebrating 100 years of Bharat Ratan Pandit Ravi Shankar Ji. Before before we start the session, we pay our homage to the legendary violinist Pandit Viji Jog on his 17th death anniversary. Coming to our show, Reflections, the guest. who will be sharing the memories of her family time with pandit ji is mrs tracy verma yoga instructor and also a social worker from new york on behalf of pandit ravi shankar music foundation i welcome mrs tracy verma to our show reflections Thank you and namaste. Namaste Tracy ji how are you? I am doing well. Can you hear me okay? Yeah yeah. Is it audible to you also? It's very audible. I hear you clearly. And today's conversation with you of reflections will be very interesting. Hearing about you for about Sri Roop Verma ji his association with Pandit ji. And of course coming to a page I so that you are also a social worker besides a uh, uh, yoga instructor because you raise this fund for yoga institute new york and also on your birthday you raised fund for uh, this uh, institute called feeding america nice to hear all these things so you are also involved in lot of social activities so So, continuing to our conversation, I invite Sri Gaurav Majumdar. Namaste, Navarun. Namaste, Tracy Ji. Namaste, Gaurav Dar. Nice to see you. Very nice to see you. I'm so happy, so happy to have you, Tracy Ji, on the show. And uh, it's amazing to see you being surrounded by Pandit Ravi Shankar Ji. so but welcome i'm not just surrounded by him he's in my heart he is and he is in your heart absolutely <laughs> absolutely and uh, i look forward look i'm really looking forward to hearing your uh, association and uh, where do we begin uh, let's begin with your journey your association uh, right. with india and indian music okay my association with indian music began uh long before i met my my husband rup verma it happened when i was a carpenter and i was building a passive solar house in royal oak maryland and the carpenter crew said let's go to this wonderful concert at the kennedy center tonight i had no idea who ravi shankar was they said something about george harrison and i thought it's got to be good So off we went on a 2 hour journey to the Kennedy Center where I got a back row seat in the upper balcony and Pandichi was this this tiny on the stage looking from so far away. Um Oregon opened that concert Colin Walcott bless his soul um was in that group and little did I know someday I'd be living here in his neighborhood. And little did I know that someday this magnificent musician would be sitting on this very couch in my living room yeah. so i had an amazing experience at that concert i was in a trance most of the night i never heard anything like it of course i was exhausted from banging nails and cutting wood all day but i still managed to get through it and uh, it introduced me to a whole new world it seemed like a whole culture in itself and the place was packed with people so i entered a whole new world that night And then later on I was very fortunate that Roop Roop Ji came to my house. Uh my landlord rented rooms in his house and he was one of Roop's first friends in the country who had uh met him at at his first con- concert in Sarasota. And uh so here I was shaking hands with my future life mate. Uh the moment I shook his hand, I knew that Roop Ji was going to be somebody I was going to be with my whole life. It took a long time but we finally got married 6 years later. 
So that's how I got introduced. The first time I heard Rupshi practice, I was I had my 8 a.m. engineering class. And uh, as soon as I got home from that class, uh, he was practicing in the guest room of the house. And there again, I went into such a profound trance. The music had such a powerful effect. And for me to get a one-on-one -on -one dose after here I was previously in this giant auditorium at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., well, that was it. Um, I was, I knew this music was for me. Which year are we talking about? We're talking the, about um, October 1977. And the previous okay. time I heard Pandichi was probably in 1975. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Such a, such a long time back. Such a long time back. Mm -hmm. And then meeting Rupji. Uh, how did all that, the meeting with Raviji's music, hearing him in person in an auditorium, and then meeting Rupji, how did it change your life? Uh, well, it opened to me an, an experience, first of all, of music. I had a very strong interest in sacred classical Western music while I was in um, high school and before, and I sang in a lot of choirs. Um, but I had never experienced the profound effect that this music could have. And that was something that nothing else could give me that experience than Indian music. So I'm just very grateful to have experienced uh, amazing inner transformation and deep, deep peace and connection with all that is through the power of this beautiful tradition. Beautiful, beautiful. And at that point, when you uh, met Rupji, was he already uh, in contact? Did he already learn from Raviji or it, it didn't yes. happen yet? Yes, okay. I'll tell you how, how his studies with, with uh, Guruji, I'll, I'll call him Guruji for the purposes. So, you know, I'm talking about uh, Ravi Shankar when I'm referring Yes, to I would him. like to know if you can let me know background and childhood of Rupji also. Where does he come from in India and how did he grow up? It would be nice to know a little yes. more about Rupji. All right, uh, a little introduction. Um, he was born in Ambala, okay. uh, which is north of Delhi. And uh, his father was a civilian in the army with the British government. Uh, and so they had to move around a little bit. But um, what happened was when, when India became independent and, and Pakistan separated from India, his family, when Rupshi was quite young, had to flee for their lives. And uh, that was quite a shocking way to, for a kid to to have to leave everything behind and try to keep up with his parents in that rush to get out of Pakistan. Um, at one point he got lost and what a panic that was. So all his life he had worries about that. But he did manage to make it safely and his family made it safely to India. Um, so at any rate, um, he did not have a musical background. His father um, and mother were not musical except his mother used to sing folk songs to him and that made a very deep impression on him. He went to a sitar concert when he was young, and I don't remember who it was. Uh, it was a name I was unfamiliar with when he told me the story. But whatever it was, he knew the next day that he wanted to study music, and um, he was able to buy a, an inexpensive flute um, with allowance money his mother gave him. And so he started with, a, I think it was, a, then he got a Japanese banjo, and then eventually he ended up um, with a sitar tremendous effort to purchase that. And somehow he found J.P. Kaushik, who took him as a student. Um, he was probably in his early teens at that point when he started Sitar. And um, J.P. Kaushik found that he was such an amazing, um, promising musician that he took him to Ali Akbar Khan. So at age 16, he studied with Ali Akbar Khan, who I'll, I'll refer to as Babaji. Uh, and that's in India. In India. Oh, that's and a beautiful studied. album cover. That's a beautiful album. And that's a great, great Jugal Bandi. Yes. So Mishra, he, Mishra I, was there, I was there for that concert. Mishra um, Pilu at the Carnegie Hall. Yeah, yeah. So uh, at any rate, when he, um, uh, when he started studying with Baba, he was going to go to engineering college when he got to college age, 
Um, and it was a great honor for Baba Ali Akbar Khan to accept him as a student. So despite the fact that he had a free education for engineering school, and he was interested to learn to fly, which he did take flying lessons, and was uh, starting out in the Air Force training. Uh, after one year of engineering school, he said to his father, I know I get a free education because I'm your oldest son and you've worked for the British Army, but my calling is to study with Baba, and I, it's too great of an honor for me to pass this up. So he gave up his studies in engineering and ended up full-time studying with Baba. He got his master's degree in music from Maha Vidya uh, University. Uh, I'm not remembering the exact correct name. Uh, maybe you can correct me on that. Same place where Sachdev went. They were friends also. Okay. Okay. And, yes, uh, I the flute player. Yeah, they were friends in college. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so he got his master's degree. He got his first job teaching master's degree students, <laughs> which was quite amazing because he was only a little bit older than them. But eventually, uh, things in India just turned sour for him, and he felt a calling to go westward. So he ended up getting an invitation to represent India in, uh, in a big uh, festival in Belgium, a very prestigious festival of music. And he had a cousin who was there who would sponsor him for that. So he went to Belgium and he really made a lot of waves in Europe. People just loved him. This was probably 1974 or 75. Um, the university where he was teaching would not let him go because they felt that he should stay and just keep teaching his students. They wouldn't give him a leave of absence. So he said, well, here I am giving an opportunity to represent India in Europe. And you're saying I have to just, I can't find a substitute to teach a few classes. So he said, here's my resignation right now, right here. So he quit that job and it was such a prestigious job. He was one of the top master's degree students in the country to get that job. So he left and he traveled in Europe. He got lots of concerts. Um, met wonderful people, and eventually his, uh, um, his spiritual guru, Swami Sham, uh, gave him a ticket. One of Swami, Swamiji's students gave him a ticket to fly to Montreal and be connected with the Sham Center in Montreal. And that led him to meeting Narendra Verma, who will weave in and out of our stories, and he's probably watching, I hope. Um, he eventually got a job at... Uh, at Carleton University teaching ethnomusicology. And uh, then the tide turned for him to come to America when a friend of his invited him to a festival at Watson Homestead, where he met his next guru, Sri Brahmananda Saraswati, who was the founder of Ananda Ashram, which is one of the oldest, I think it is the oldest ashram in the country now, 56 years, and I have a close association with that ashram still to this day, where we were married and where our son was born. So uh, that's his journey. Did I say it enough? That wasn't even in my notes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I was just curious because I met Rupji in India at Lodi Estate at Guruji's home. And uh, I always wanted to know more about him. And so, so when did he meet Guruji and how did his association with Guruji start? OK, now we start on page one of my notes. <laughs> Thank so you. he met Guruji um, when, uh, through Narendra Verma. He was visiting from Ottawa. He had traveled to Montreal to spend time with Narendra. And I talked to him yesterday to refresh my memory on this in about 1976, before I was on the scene. And uh, they developed a, a connection, um, but there wasn't a, a commitment to actually you know, really do a full-time study with him at that time. Uh, meanwhile, Baba Ali Akbar Khan had long left India and formed the Ali Akbar College of Music in San Rafael, California, where my son is currently still associated. Uh, so Rupshi had to discontinue his studies with Baba because he had left India. So he was ready and ripe for, a, for an available teacher. And when um, next time when he saw Panditji at, Nar at Narendra's house, uh, I, I think the topic came up and they made a plan. Uh, Guru Guruji had to give it serious thought though before he would actually go ahead with initiating him as a student. So he talked to Narendra and, 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 um, and talked to Rupshi and eventually got the feeling that Rupshi would be a devoted and proper student for him. 
So the next time they got together, which was probably in 1978, he did the formal initiation and you'll see some faded out pictures in the slideshow about that. So then the first time that I got to meet Panici personally was when he, I think it's when he came to, to the ashram, um, at Ananda Ashram. I was not living there. I had gotten a job um, as um, an engineer at Energy Management Services in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, we were doing energy conservation work, which was my field. And uh, what happened when I transferred, I would just travel a lot to the ashram because it was a short train ride from Philly uh, to get to New York and then take a bus to the ashram. So I was fortunate to meet him when he was there at a time that um, I think it was a big event. It might've been Guru Purnima or something like that. And um, I was asked to actually be during the lunchtime, I was asked to, to make, to serve his table and make sure that he, he got the, the food and the care and the personal attention that a dignity, a proper dignitary would need. And I was very young then, very young in my early twenties or you know, mid twenties. And I, I had so little experience in this deep, rich culture, but here I was serving this great master. And he, he got a sense that somebody who was uh, taking good care of him and such a personal interest in him must have some connection with Rupchi because he was there because of Rupchi and of course, because of Guruji Sri Brahmananda. And um, so he asked Rupchi later in the, in the visit, he said, what, what kind of a, do you have some connection with this girl, Tracy? And, and Rupchi said, yeah, she's a friend. And he said, well, what kind of friend? Really, what kind of friend? <laughs> so he said, well, she's a girlfriend. <laughs> and and he, he really thought about it for a while. By the end of that visit, he realized that we were definitely committed to each other. Um, and he actually went ahead and gave his formal okay for our someday marriage. How nice. So he blessed both of you. Very much. Yeah. So um, if I can just continue on with my notes. Please, please. We are listening and we are really enjoying. If you can please. Okay. okay. Yeah. And, and Sukhanyaji from uh, London, she's saying Namaskar. She's, she's, she's listening and she, she's part of this and uh, she's sending her best wishes. Sukhanyaji, my, my <laughs> greetings to you, warm greetings. So I've been very fortunate to go to many concerts of Guruji. Um, my role, um, I have a bouquet of flowers just out of view here. My role was always to bring flowers whenever we would see him, whenever and wherever. So, you know, those little, those little plastic tubes that you can stick a flower into. I, I had a lot of those and those, uh, ended up in his hands, um, over the years. And at, um, backstage, a lot of times I was backstage. My lucky job was doing the ironing and believe me, ironing his clothes, they were perfect to begin with, but I would iron them again because always they had to be ironed fresh for the concert. That was such, it felt like such a big responsibility to iron the blessed clothes that he would wear. Um, and I, I always had front row seats. Uh, often Rupchi would be accompanying him on tambura. Um, and there's one story of one of the concerts where um, Abaji was his accompanist, um, Alarakaji. We call him lovingly Abaji, as you know, but my audience may not know. Um, Abaji was paying careful attention, little did I know, from the stage at Carnegie Hall, as I was keeping tal, you know, and I was, I thought I was doing it right, but it was, I think it was jup tal or something, and I was, I had only just basically figured out teen tal. Um, so during the intermission, when I went backstage, oh my gosh, Abaji gave such a scolding, not to me, he gave such a scolding to Ruchi for not teaching me Japtal or Ektal or whichever one it was. And, uh, and then Ruchi let me know <laughs> that if I didn't know the Tal, not to try to clap the Tal, because in, traditionally in Indian music, you know, we keep, we keep the Tal so that... Yes. Uh, so that we can stay in rhythm with the with the uh, cycle, yeah. so that we're yeah. with the music. And also, apparently, I found out 
that if you're in the front row, the musicians are watching you. So you <laughs> and might be relying on you to help them keep. Yes, it helps if somebody is giving tal because then you're watching the person give tal and then you're playing with that. So it it helps if somebody is perfect in tal and uh, that's a big help. Big help. Right, and I would have never never guessed that somebody of the caliber of Abaji would even have you know anything to do with paying that much attention to what somebody in the front row was doing with their hands but i learned my lesson there many many lessons i learned okay so um one of the concerts i went to was the concert for this recording and that picture i sent to you but i don't think it made it on time for your slide no, no no please tell us about this concert because this was a historic concert historic con please tell us about this concert Oh. and the music and and what you what you experienced it would be wonderful to know oh certainly um i'll start with the picture taking session out front um it's outside the carnegie hall by the poster it's this outside the, poster the carnegie in front hall. of the hall and the picture that i sent you which i wish you'd gotten the sideshow was the two of them uh right before this picture was taken may i be so blunt to say that they had a rivalry <laughs> of sorts and that picture shows their expression, which is pretty funny. Anyway, <laughs> this was early eighties, right? What's that? This, this was early eighties. This concert. Yes, I think nineteen eighty-two, if I'm not wrong. Yes, I think it was. Um, I'm not going to try to look for the exact year. And the Mr. Mr. Puyo is outstanding. Yeah, May fifth, eighty-two, the day after my birthday. Yeah. So at any rate, um, Zakir and Abaji ah. is always. I mean, what to have those four people on the stage? Oh my goodness, you ought to have been there, folks. It was what an amazing, amazing. It was, I think, the opening of the inauguration of the Festival of India. And in the audience as well, there were quite a lot of dignitaries that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I don't think anybody was sitting in their seat. <laughs> oh my God. Not that they were standing up, but I think we were all so elevated by that experience of these two magnificent oh musicians of, of highest caliber on this planet yes. Yes. Um, it was yes it was just so profound and amazing and everybody loved it we all just really loved it the two of them were really at their best C correct me if i'm wrong tracy g uh, in the audience if i'm not wrong because it was the inauguration of festival of india so we had the prime minister of india indira gandhi and president of america ronald reagan is that right i'm not sure you're not I sure was, okay. i was right in the front and i they weren't sitting next to me otherwise it was okay. okay just just I, uh, think, I think they might have gone to the opening that was in the kennedy center and maybe maybe my, okay my story weaves around this later in my notes here okay so, wonderful. Uh, wonderful but, but no doubt there were great dignitaries there at this concert so i'm going through the concerts all right there was another concert at carnegie hall this one was an amazing experience for me personally because um uh, at this point i was pregnant with arjun we had since gotten married and this was 1980 uh it must have been early in 1985 um maybe uh early early maybe march or something so i wasn't very big but i was a little bit pregnant and um as usual i was there to do the ironing backstage and just you know make chai and all that kind of thing um it, they were waiting during the sound check for kokila rice um sachajit Ray's, Ray's wife to come and play tambora for the concert, but she hadn't arrived yet. I guess, you know, sometimes things can get slow getting around in New York City. So uh, Panichi asked me to accompany on the, uh, on the tambora for the sound check. So I got to play tambora with Guruji on Carnegie Hall stage with Arjun in my oh. room. So I will say, that now that Arjun has had the experience within Womb on Carnegie Hall, as you will come to know, Arjun is an amazing musician, my son. Yes. Now, and uh, I am waiting. I, I will live well beyond and past the day when he performs in Carnegie Hall on the stage out of the womb. 
Please, sure. I'm sure I'm, we'll, we'll be looking forward to that day. Yes, yes. He's he's ready for that. Um, so at any rate, that was a very, uh, very big night for me. Um, Coquila did finally arrive, so I didn't have to play in the concert. But what I learned as being part of um, Guruji's family, you do whatever needs to be done. Yes. Anything, whether it's playing a music, you know, an instrument, or you know, going and running and getting it, get, doing an errand to grab something or whatever. As as a part of the family, as part of the student base, you were available at beck and call for anything that was needed, and I was very honored to do that. And I learned that different musicians have a different way that they like to have the tambura played. I've played tambura for a long, long time. At that point, not very long, but he had a specific way to play tambura and. Tambura, it seems like an easy instrument, but I could go into a long um, description about that. It's not as easy. It was very, very, very specific about how it should be struck, how it should be kept, and where your finger. He was very, 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 you know. Yeah. Uh, he would teach everybody who would play with him. He would show them, and and he would insist that it should be played in in a in a certain way and not just you know just strum it wherever and however you want and yeah. and the pace also the pace of the music pace of the strings of the tanpura would be very well defined by him yes so that was a whole different ex experience i had to be very conscious every string i struck every single time uh, because it was different than what I was starting to get used to. And uh, that was quite, quite a lesson for me. So I got my music lesson on the stage that night. How nice. All right. So then um, then there was a, a time a little bit later in my pregnancy when I was quite large when he did the concerto for sitar and orchestra. Mm -hmm. Now, this was not the performance in New York City, which we were not able to attend. But it was the performance in New Jersey. I think it was in Newark, New Jersey. And uh, so very close friends of Narendra Verma, um, Mahendra and Urmila um, Dosi, who lived near there, uh, hosted us, us all um, before and uh, before the concert and, uh, and after the concert. So we had a comfortable place to hang out. Um, so after the concert, um, we had, uh, we were gonna have dinner. And here is Abaji in all his glory. He puts on the apron, he walks into the kitchen, he puts on the apron and says, I'm gonna cook dinner for Tracy and her baby. <laughs> so he made the, he made one very special dish for, for Arjun to be yet born and myself that night, which was really special. How nice, how nice. And of course, they all hovered around me, making sure that I was okay, okay, okay. And it was really sweet because I was, it must've been about May because he was born in June. <clears throat> So then that takes me to Arjun's birth. Now, Arjun's birth, I thought was the time of festival of India. Um, that was 85, but um, he was due right around the time of, an op of one of the big opening concerts in uh, Washington DC at the Kennedy Center and Rupshi was scheduled to accompany him on Tambora and all that that entailed, which is being the right hand man to help you know, take care of all the loose ends. So uh, Panici was really relying on him to be there, but he was nervous that Arjun might be born at a time that would interfere with Rupchi being able to do that. So he kept calling every single day. Is baby born yet? Is baby born yet? <laughs> no, not yet, not yet. <laughs> well, by golly, Arjun finally was born in all glory. Everything went very smoothly. Uh, I'm happy to say he was an underwater baby. That was something very innovative in its day and, and at home and safely, and it all went so well. Uh, what happened was uh, Rupshi's father had died the year before. Mm -hmm. And um, so traditionally, as you know, in India, the father would name the baby. Well, Rupshi um, was feeling so, uh, you know, sad that his father wasn't alive anymore. And, and Guruji said, I'm your father, I'm your umbrella, don't worry, I will take care of naming Arjun. So he was so reassuring as a father, not just a teacher for, for, for Rupchi. And uh, so now it was our, our wait for the name in the midst of all this concertizing. So Rupchi went ahead, uh, went ahead and did the concert as was expected of him. So the timing turned out to be quite all right for Arjun's birth. 
Rupes, you could be there for that. And, uh, and we were just on standby. Meanwhile, my mother came to help me take care of the newborn baby. My mother, who reminded me this a couple of days ago when I talked to her, oh, make sure to tell them about uh, Arjun getting named by Ravi Shankar. Yes, mom. <laughs> so, <laughs> hi, mom, if you're watching. Um, so what happened, uh, she couldn't understand why we didn't have a name for our firstborn child. And I explained to her that, well, uh, you know, we're just calling him uh, Sweetie Pie and Honey Darling, and we'll, we'll see what he feels like. We'll, we'll just give it time. But we didn't tell her that somebody was going to name her because that was so unusual for my Midwestern family upbringing. Well, she happened to be there when he called and he said, his name will be Arjun. And she was like, what? Oh, wow. <laughs> she couldn't believe that. She was actually a state of shock. It, it was kind of upsetting to her because she didn't understand why we didn't name him and why why we kept waiting. It was eight days later that we finally got the name. And as as Guruji described to us later, he it took him a long time. He wanted to really meditate on what name would come to him. You know, he was a very highly intuitive and introspective deep and connected person on so many levels. And uh, he came up with Arjun because he was born in June, which is convenient, because he was a, an East-West guy, um, having a, an Indian father and an American mother. So to make it sound not unusual, Arjun being an unusual name here in the West, people could, could call him RG, which could sound like a respectful way of saying Arjun, Arjun G or RG, or think of it as letter R, letter G. So it had all these kind of more reasons why he thought Arjun would be nice for Arjun. So Arjun, if you're watching, hello, good morning in California. Um, yeah, Arjun is watching, yes. Oh, good. <laughs> He's very so that's much about there. that. Um, now about uh, the next event of going to a concert, usually uh, um, at that point, what happened was uh, uh, we had moved away. We were gonna move away from the ashram uh, because with, with little Arjun bumbling around there, it just felt like uh, the time was right to get a bigger place. But before we before Arjun was born, um, I, I don't know why I didn't get this in my notes, but oh my goodness, um, Guruji came and visited us. Um, okay, this was um, because he wanted to get out of the city, get into the fresh air and just enjoy um, country time at the ashram. And um, so he would, because he would frequent visiting us when he was in, in New York City, he would leave us every time he left to go on to the next part of his tour, he would leave us with his, his items, um, maybe a, a an umbrella like this one, I have two of them, or God bless, look what I still have. Oh my God. Blessed shoes. Yes. Um, so we, uh, at one of the concerts when Rupshi was in town, because usually he would be, uh, Rupshi would be traveling to Europe for his European tour when, when Guruji was performing in, in New York. But there was one time when Rupshi was home. So we thought, let's go. Uh, we went to the concert. We brought his things to return them to him because we figured we just wouldn't get uh, much chance to see him after we moved here in upstate New York in Oneonta, which is now about three and a half hours from the city. So I, uh, when we went backstage after the concert, we brought him his a bag of his sweater and his he had some very nice gloves. And wouldn't you know, Rupshi had gotten these first class gloves from my mom for Christmas that were the most delicious leather, soft, warm gloves I'd ever seen. Well, accidentally, those got put in the bag, too. So at least we finally got to give a gift to Anuchi, I'm sure, to Guruji. I'm sure he found somebody to enjoy those gloves if he didn't use them. Um, now, one thing I just wanted to say in general about his concerts, I just want to insert, for those people who didn't get a chance to hear him live, that being in a concert with him was an experience that there was nothing like it in the world. Okay. Um, I, I can't find any better word than to say magical. Um, high on life. Um, it was a culture of its own. And after the concert was over, you felt such a, I felt such a huge shift internally, like 
I had just been to heaven, um, which also reminds me what it was like taking classes with Elliot Burkhan. That was a similar heavenly experience. Oh boy, I've been so blessed. At any rate, uh, I wanted to talk about um, being backstage, um, getting so many free passes, uh, free comp tickets. Um, and for that, I'm grateful to uh, Sukanya. Thank you. And there was sort of a, a circle of friends that would meet backstage. I miss them. Hello, Misha Schreiber, whatever happened to you, Partisarti. There are many, I don't remember all their names, but we were, we were kind of a, a group that, that were all just uh, great devotees of, of Guruji and, and friends with each other. One day, I got a call from Shan, Sanjay Sharma, who, as you know, used to travel with him to uh, take care of his instruments, uh, Sanjay Sharma of the Ricky Ram uh, lineage in Delhi, uh, instrument maker. So he called because he was in town traveling with Panditji and we had we were living in Oneonta now, so we had kind of lost touch and hadn't hadn't gone to concerts for a while. Um, at this point, my kids were uh, in there. Well, Arjun was in his um, probably early teens, and uh, Uma was yeah uh, maybe a little six years younger than that. So. Uh, Sanjay said, I'm here for the concert. I just wanted to check in and see how Rupshi is doing. I said, well, Rupshi's in Europe. And I said, is, is uh, Guruji performing? And he said, yeah, he's got a concert in two nights at Carnegie Hall. And I said, oh my gosh, I would just love it to bring my kids to see him. And he said, well, it's sold out, but um, maybe there's some way we can get tickets for you. And at that point, uh, I started to work my, my determination and persistence. I called everybody I could call. I, uh, Carnegie Hall just would not, you know, I'm sure they got to know who I was. I called them so often. By the way, my great grandfather was an assistant manager at Carnegie Hall back in, I don't know when that was, uh, early 1900s. Yeah. So uh, here I was trying to get tickets. And um, after two days, I got a call from Carnegie Hall that sure enough, they had arranged two free tickets. Now what's oh, oh, nice. there are three of us. I'm not gonna leave my kid, one of my kids behind and my kids are too young to go by themselves. So I said, okay, um, after you're done with school, uh, we'll ju I'll just bring your clothes in the car. I got their, you know, their nice uh, kurtas and it's all work knees. And I, I think I was teaching yoga or something. So I had my yoga uh, comfortable clothes on and just grabbed my outfit. Um, and off we went. I trusted the universe to get me a ticket. And believe me, when he would come to town, there were a lot of people who couldn't get into that place. Carnegie Hall was nowhere near big enough for his audience in New York City. So I, I was determined and I trusted that the universe would get me in. And with that mindset, um, I give my, gave my kids the, the free tickets that we got at the door. And uh, I knew where they would be. I said, go on in, I'll, you know, if I'm not, if, if I don't find you at intermission, that means I'm still outside, meet me after the concert out here. So I went to the very back of a long line waiting for tickets. And there was somebody who approached me from behind who said, I've got a, a ticket. Um, is there anybody here who would like a ticket? I turned around immediately, I said, how much? He said, 70 cash. I gave him 70 cash and I got in because he came to the back of the line. So I made it in that concert. That was such a blessing. That was a miracle in my life. Um, I went to, well, the last concert that I saw of Panditji, he was very frail and I knew what hotel he liked to stay in. So I called the hotel the night before or the day before to check in on him. And just to say how much I, Look forward to the concert. I knew that Sukanya had arranged um, a backstage pass so that I knew I could see him. And, um, and I just wanted to say hello because I missed him. Um, he was very, very ill. He had a stomach upset, something chicken that he ate at lunch didn't agree with him. And he wasn't even sure if he could do the concert, but I was gonna go anyway, regardless, thinking that hopefully it's gonna work out. Well, the next day I went to the concert, met my friends Gayatri and Amrit there. And um, 
when he was brought out on stage, two people had to hold him up as he hobbled out on the stage. He looked so frail. It was almost shocking. Could he actually pull this off? He sat down on the modified seat they'd made for him with his modified flattened gourd sitar. And he picked it up and we were all just holding our breath. And you know how with such a warmth in his heart, he would say, good evening, friends. Oh, I can hear that echoing in my head. And you could feel that warmth and love in the tone of his voice. And the first pluck, you knew he was back 100%. Within, within one second, that stomach ache was gone. He became young again and the music played like nothing else. That was the miracle of this music, which I saw happen to my husband at his last concert one week before he passed away. He managed to perform when he couldn't even walk hardly. And it was an amazing experience for us all with Arjun accompanying him. <coughs> um, I went to this concert Full circle. Full circle, yes. That was an amazing concert. Um, I was fortunate to get into that and to get a backstage pass for that. It had been many, many years since I'd seen um, the Shankar family and um, and also, uh, well, stories about um, Nora Jones. I hadn't really gotten to any of those yet, but I have I have some of those to tell too. But anyway, so I, I was fortunate to see her when she was a little girl. It was a secret we kept in my family that she and uh, that Sue Jones had given birth to uh, Gitali, um, Guruji's daughter. And we were fortunate to spend time with them. And that was always a really special time to see uh, Guruji with his little girl. She loved to dance. She loved to spin in circles. And he was so loving and creative and fun with her. And they would even come and visit at the ashram when he was staying at our apartment. Um, yeah, so those were special times. So I hadn't seen her grown up. And there she was backstage at this concert. And it warmed my heart so much to see that now everything had come full circle and his whole family could come together. Uh, Sukanya was there, Sue was there, Nora, Anushka, they were all there. And I was back there with them as part of their family. Sue and I delighting in our daughters. Oh boy, do I have stories to tell about my daughter, who is a magnificent Uma. And, uh, and about Nora, who's obviously just magnificent. So that was a really, really special time. And then I got to wave them off as they got off, got off all together in the luxury, comfortable bus at the end of the concert. And it was just made me so happy to see them all together. Okay. Um, I'm also grateful to Sukanya, otherwise, other than all those backstage passes and occasional complimentary tickets, um, for giving Pandichi a home life and yeah. the chance to, to enjoy family and even have a little dog, so sweet, um, and for her dedication and love for him. I, I think what, what those of us who are married to sitarists who travel the world realize is that they're not very they're not going to be available for us all the time because they've got to travel for their their work but um but we learn to uh we learn to roll with the tides when they're home they're really home and when they're gone they're going to be gone a while so i appreciate that she was able to um uh, hold things together throughout all of his career and uh and i know that he he had great respect and love for me knowing that i could uh, be the fortress that Rupshi needed so that he could travel the world as well. Uh, oops. Okay. Um, just funny little things. Uh, when, um, this is back in time, when Gurdj used to come and visit us at, in our apartment at the ashram, he would do funny things. Like <coughs> one time, uh, we were we had new, newly moved into this what was the first class apartment at the ashram at the time it was an old chicken coop converted to actually quite a nice building but it was quite funky and uh, <clears throat> so he wanted to help us shop for a stereo where do we go I think it was the local Kmart at Monroe Plaza so he picked out our stereo for us so that uh, 
we could have some music playing for him when he came to visit. That was just a sweet thing. Um, now, on that, that trip that he came to visit us um, at the ashram, I've gone back in time to his ashram visits to our apartment. He was having some health problem. Um, can you tell me how much time I have? Because this is quite a dramatic story. Yeah, we have, we have, we have time. Please, okay. please speak, please speak. Okay. The time. Right. Thank you. Well, I think this time it must have been, um, it was in the early 80s, so it was before Arjun was born. Um, uh, he was having health issues, and I, I think he really wanted to consult with uh, Guruji Sri Brahmananda Saraswati, who used to be a, a medical doctor, Dr. R. S. Mishra, before he became a, a guru and, and formed the ashram and the Yoga Society of New York. So he really he thought he would be a good person to consult with because he was looking for alternative advice, not just um, going the, the standard um, Western medical route. He wanted to see what, what Guruji Brahmananda could have to offer to him for health advice. So um, when he came to visit and stay at our apartment, um, he brought with him an envelope and he gave it to, Gur to Guruji Sri Brahmananda. And uh, when it came time for him to leave to go back to the city, he didn't get a chance. Uh, Sri Brahmananda hadn't had a chance to review that. So uh, Rupshi said, no worry, Tracy works in New York City. At that time, I was energy manager at Metropolitan Hospital on the Upper East Side. And um, so he, uh, Rupshi said, Tracy will bring it back to you when she goes back to work after Sri Brahmananda has had a time to look it over. So I was entrusted with that envelope. And um, that day I drove, I driving back and forth to New York City from the ashram took a long time. It was, um, it was a day that I decided to drive Rupshi's car, which was a really old funky Chevy. It looked really funky. And um, so I, I brought this envelope into work. Um, I remember that it was before our wedding because uh, uh, Guruji called my secretary just to check in on me and make sure that I was coming at my lunch break to bring that envelope. And when my secretary answered, she an answered Miss Andrews' uh, office. And, and when I got on the phone, he said, you know, I'm really looking forward that soon the day will come when you'll be Mrs. Verma, <laughs> which seemed to be taking forever. But at any rate, that was so heartwarming. Um, so I went ahead and I, uh, I took my lunch break, took the subway to go down and meet him in Sue's apartment in, uh, down in lower Manhattan. And I had a lovely time watching Gitali dance around and jump around and, uh, and be delighted with her father who so rarely got to spend time with her. Um, but the thing was that that morning at work, temptation got the worst of me. Here I am in my mid 20s and uh, I opened that envelope that was entrusted to me. Nobody in the world knew that until just now. I'm not gonna share what was in it, but I will share the consequences. And if there's anybody listening to this who does not think that there is some overpowering consciousness in this universe, this will prove that there is. Because I got immediate karmic retribution for that action which my inner voice told me was wrong and I, and I didn't pay attention to that. Um, so after I had a wonderful time with them during my lunch break, got home, got back to my office, finished my work of the day, went over to get the car, the car was gone. Such oh an old funky Chev. That was the one car that was gone from the block where I had parked it. I called the police, of course, how many, hundreds of cars are stolen in New York City every day. They never could find it. So I had to take the subway and got home really late that night, but I never told Rupshi that I'd opened that envelope. I would suspect that Guruji being such a tuned in person must have sensed that. Anyway, I think I've completed my karmic retribution for that. So listen to your inner voice when it shouts at you. Um, and when somebody entrusts you with something, take it very seriously. So one of many lessons I learned from being in Guruji's orbit. Uh, another lesson I learned was um, during that visit, uh, 
uh, Guruji Sri Brahmananda wanted to give him some healing. So on my bed, because um, Rupshi and I would stay in another guest room on the ashram when, when, he, when he would stay in our apartment. So on my bed, here we all are. I think there were, you know, five of us, Guruji at his head and Rupshi and me. I was on the left side of him. So I got asked to put my hands on his heart. We were giving him something like Reiki, and I had never done that before. This was all so new to me because here I, you know, explaining I'm coming out of the Midwest, that my degree's in engineering, da da da, whatever. And I was a carpenter. So I put my hand on his heart and I thought, oh, I, I guess in order to send energy, you got to sort of push, right? To get the energy to come through your hand. Well, that was not the right thing to do. He had to tell me to just touch very lightly. And I've suddenly realized it's like when you're playing tambora too loud and you suddenly wake up and realize that, oops, I'm playing too loud, soften it up. So I softened my touch. And that was quite a lesson to soften the connection with your heart. Whew. Okay, I got a funny story after that. Um, sometimes he would entrust us with his laundry when he was staying at a hotel in New York City. So at in the apartment at the ashram, there were three there were three apartments in the same building, and one washing machine. So I, being a, a novice at this sort of thing, uh, was given the bag of his laundry, and I just put it in with the rest of our laundry in the machine. I didn't count how many. You know, undershirts and underpants and that sort of thing he were in the bag before I dumped them in the machine with all of our things. Uh, so when it came time to returning his laundry, <laughs> there was an extra underpant, in there, which neither he nor Ruchi could identify a man's underpant. <laughs> Still to this day, I don't know what's the story on that unless it happened to already be in the machine when I had put the clothes in. But it was just the funniest thing. We chuckled about that for years. All right. So if anybody ever gives you their laundry to wash with your own, you always count how many they get, uh, pieces they give you before you return things back. I wanted to talk to him as a teacher, what he was like as a teacher. Because I got to witness that when I would come home from work, I would sometimes see him giving Rupshi a lesson. Um, and that was in 1978 when Rupshi formally became a, a, a student of his. So he actually studied with him for 10 years very devotedly. Um, the, the first time I heard Rupshi uh, tell me what it was like when he had started to teach him in the apartment there, when I came home from work, um, he said, back to basics, just the simple scale, up and down, up and down, sapat, murchana, back to raga, yaman, right back to the beginning, just like he had never, as if he had never played sitar before, and Rupshi had been playing for decades at that point. But the lesson was that the foundation is key. Always go back to the basics in your practice and keep that as your solid base. As for life lessons, he taught about being aware, precise. All the details of the performances had to be spelled out. So um, he really taught to Rupji the travel lifestyle, how to really do that. Because as a musician and you're traveling a lot, it's not just being on the stage and performing, it's everything that goes around that. So it's a whole lifestyle of how to travel. Well, he advised him, you really shouldn't, uh, you know, stay in people's houses, always opt to stay in a hotel, which Rupshi did not follow. He stayed in hotel. He very rarely stayed in hotels. He, Rupshi had such a close circle of devotees in Europe. They always loved to house him whenever he traveled there. So he didn't always abide by what, what Guruji had advised. But he was really good at teaching him practical strategic planning. And uh, Guruji was such a great manager of life. Um, he taught him to be early, especially to airports, to the concert hall, to appointments. Um, he was so amazingly organized and he lived what he taught. He oversaw every single detail 
of who would do what and when. And I was witness to that because a lot of times we would go back and forth and uh, pick them up and drop them off at hotels. Or sometimes I would go and pick up Rupshi at the hotel after they'd come back from a tour. And I would hear him go through with Rupshi all the details of the things that needed to be done for the next day. So he really had an amazing skill um, in life, uh, other than his amazing skill as a musician and a beautiful person. So he had very high standards, highest standard for his students and for himself. And he lived up to that standard. He taught so much more than music, as I've described to you, in a loving way, yet stripped. Absolutely no compromise on quality. And he often would have three to five engagements a day. I don't know how he survived and lived so long with the incredibly busy schedule that he lived. It, he was a hero of Indian music to have done so much in one lifetime. Um, as a father, I was treated as part of the family. Um, and that was something very special to me to become a part of a tradition that I hadn't been raised in, which took me in so warmly. Um, <clears throat> all right, I told you all those stories. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about the experience of his personal presence. <clears throat> Backstage, <clears throat> the chances that I had to see him <clears throat> in later years, it would be very short. You know, we get less than a minute because there was such a huge crowd of people in line waiting to see him. And he would right away ask, how is the ashram doing? He was so concerned about Ananda Ashram because he knew that Guruji Sri Brahmananda had passed away. And each time he would ask with great concern, um, you know, how, how is it managing? Well, I described it has a board of directors and, and they run the ashram now and it's, it's doing okay. Um, I would bring ashram devotees with me. Jennifer, who's hopefully watching this, remembers that wonderful time that she got to meet him. Uh, and Sumuki, who had just been named that very day by uh, the teacher Joan Suval at the ashram. <clears throat> so anyway, um, it was special. He had a special affinity to the ashram. And particularly, he had that affinity because um, Rupshi was starting a school of music at the ashram in 1978. Rupshi formed um, the music school there. And he, uh, you know, he had big dreams for this school and it took a long time to get off the ground. But now it is officially a nonprofit called the East West School of Music as part of the International Schools of East West Unity at Ananda Ashram. For Guruji to support that was so beautiful. And what he said was that the cassette tape of, I think it was George Harrison and Friends that he had recorded. He said that um, he gave us permission to sell um, copies of that tape and raise money for the uh, music school. So that was really generous of him. Um, I was talking about his presence as being um, gracious, authentic, down to earth, magnanimous, sharp, witty. He had such an ability to connect deeply with you. Um, he could really fine tune to anyone, no matter what, even if it was a waitress. It was just fun to see him interact with people when we'd go to lunch at restaurants <clears throat> to see how present he was and how he could be so witty and make fun and wonderful jokes out of just about anything. <clears throat> uh, it was just such an elating experience to be, to be with him. Uh, Well, my daughter, her experience when she got to meet him the first time, there's a, a picture that I sent later to you. If you put that in the slideshow, it'd be great. When he reached out to shake her hand, she said she never felt such a soft hand in her whole life. There was something so powerful about his hand. Of course, it was Rupert's hand that brought me to him as well. Something about those sitar hands. Uh, <clears throat> I just want to mention that that he was a world citizen. He had a world passport. I think he was nominated uh, possibly as for a Nobel Prize because he was doing a lot of work on peace initiatives for the United Nations. In addition to his endless concerts, um, uh, interviews, um, uh, lecture demos, uh, performances, just it was an unbelievable schedule that he had. But 
that he could do so much more for the world than just music. His heart was so big, he really wanted to make the world a more peaceful place in all ways. And I don't know how he managed to pull off having any kind of a satisfying home life when he was so much on the go, but I'm really glad that finally came around. Now, I just wanted to talk about the gifts. He gave so many gifts. Well, what I'm wearing is a gift. Um, <clears throat> he gave these beautiful earrings that I'm not wearing. These are Mrs. Sharma, Dr. Uh, Ram Karan Sharma's wife, a great uh, Sanskrit yogi, um, who gave me these earrings. And this is a necklace that Rupshi gave me in, in India, in Kulu. But uh, I couldn't find those earrings. I searched the house. They weren't where I've always kept them. So I think they're in the bank vault. That's how precious they are to me. Um, I made a um, I made a sitar case out of um, cloth. It was um, like quilted cloth for uh, for him, so that he didn't have to always carry the heavy sitar box, but could just when he was going to events that were nearby with an easy walking distance, he could just carry the sitar in its cloth case, a nicely padded cloth case. And he loved it so much. Uh, when he came back again the following year, he asked if I would make one for Shubho, his beloved son, who was so sadly died quite young. So I made one for Shubho. And then the following year, he brought me a sari and those beautiful earrings and necklace set and all kinds of things. <clears throat> so he brought me these um, purses, which I still use to this day. And we have a beautiful um, cherry, Japanese cherry blossom scroll that's hanging in our stairwell, which is perfect in this house. I've been here now over almost 34 years. It just turned out to be a perfect thing to hang in our big stairwell. And he gave a giant long scroll, about 20 feet long of a sitar that had been drawn with a magic marker, a huge sitar. That scroll was hung <clears throat> for a couple of concerts we had locally at the State College here in Oneonta, New York, in their big theater at Goodrich Hall, Goodrich Theater. Um, it was used for the last concert Rupshi performed on March 3rd, 2017. I want to tell you there was something magic about that scroll. <clears throat> Somebody had given it to him and he gave it to us. <clears throat> the first half of the concert Arjun took care of because Rupshi was in quite a weakened state, uh, which was worked out beautifully. Um, if it hadn't been for this local concert, Rupshi would never have been able to perform anywhere out of town, but this had been arranged long before we knew he would be ill. And um, Arjun was very well ready to, to take the first half of the concert, even though it was, it was publicized as Rup Verma uh, with Arjun um, accompanying on sitar. <clears throat> so in the second half, the city of Oneana did not know that Arjun was, that Rupshi was was close to the end of his life. He, Rupshi prayed every single day that he would be able to survive long enough to perform this concert that he had booked long, long a year, more than a year before. And he prayed to his Guruji and to Baba and to Guruji Sri Brahmananda to give him the strength and to Swami Sham to give him the strength to be able to pull off this concert as his last well, he wasn't really thinking of his last. He thought he could live past it, but he did. He had that faith that his gurus were present for him. And as a result, when he came out on that stage, he was like Guruji the last time I saw him coming out of frail on the stage, but even worse. We had to bring Rupji out on a wheelchair. The hospice organization gave these giant oxygen tanks, which they normally would only have in a hospital for us to use for him. And because uh, he was hooked up to oxygen, we had a propped up seat for him and we all got him onto the stage and sitting down comfortably and Arjun tuned up his sitar and gave it to him. And I think the audience gasped because they just could not believe that this thin as bones, frail man could actually pull off playing sitar. But there it was, as soon as he plucked, he was there. He was there 100% and he pulled off that concert. Meanwhile, the scroll in hanging uh, in front of the curtain at the back of the stage started moving. Now, it didn't do this in the first half of the concert. It only did it in the second half of the concert. There was so much Shakti, so much energy in that auditorium 
that the scroll kept moving away from the curtain, bumping the people that were on the stage because Rupshi was in such a weakened condition. We couldn't rely on uh, it just being the four of us on the stage. So we invited all of Rupshi's students to crowd the stage and be available if something happened to him because both my daughter and I, Uma and I were playing tambura and uh, Arjun and Rupshi were playing sitara. So all of our family were occupied. We needed somebody else to grab him if he started to fall over. So Diana Waldron, bless her soul, was right in front of that scroll and it kept bumping her head because it had a, you know, a wooden bar at the bottom. And she had to keep pushing it back because it was like the energy in the room couldn't sit still. It was glorified that Rupshi was there. Anyway, that concert pulled off. It came off and eight days later he was no longer. But thanks to the power of his gurus and the power of his music, he was able to give his last gift to the world, a beautiful parting gift. That was about that gift. So I think I finished with all my gifts, except one time when I picked up, uh, when we picked up Gurji at the airport, which we did a lot, it was after our wedding. He couldn't be at our wedding. Uh, we had our wedding um, at the ashram. <clears throat> and when he arrived at the airport, we went to pick him up and Rupshi said, how come you have two sitars? He said, this one is for you, for your wedding present. And that turned out to be the most magnificent sitar Rupshi had ever had. He was not satisfied with his sitars. And Guruji paid particular attention to make sure that the Ricky Ram um, sitar makers would give it first class treatment. He, ch he kept checking on it and he described how it wasn't up to his standards and they had to keep tweaking it to his standards, not to Rupshi's standards. Rupshi didn't quite have the status that Guruji had, so he made sure that he got a first-class sitar. <coughs> and and Sanjay, <coughs> Sanjay described to me years later when we took it to him to get it fine-tuned when he was here in Albany once, he said, this is a magnificent sitar. This one is a really special one. So that, that was an amazing gift. And do you know that Rupshi, when Arjun uh, Arjun started playing star at the age of five. I'm happy to say that this is his 30th year of playing sitar now. So um, Arjun got uh, presented to Baba uh, Ali Akbar Khan at age 16 to become his student. And Baba took him in um, and thanked him, thanked us for giving him the gift of Arjun to, to train. And Rupshi wanted to make sure Arjun had the best sitar. So he gave Arjun his best sitar. And um, as a result, uh, Rupshi spent his whole life purchasing sitars, trying to find one that would be equal to that. He never got one that was as good as that. And now it's back here in the house and uh, waiting for Arjun to return. So what a gift the sitar was. Oh my goodness. Um, I have a huge stack of LPs, which he signed, Rupa and Tracy, Blessings from Guruji, Ashirvad. <laughs> I have so many CDs here that he gave us, a huge stack. Um, he wanted us to listen to a lot of music, and of course he had helped us buy the stereo, so we made sure we'd do that. Um, I was so blessed to have known him. Here I was, this, I would say, clumsy young 20s female. <coughs> carpenter, engineer, <coughs> raised in the conservative Midwest, <coughs> totally a novice <coughs> at this refined culture. And he literally took me under his wing as like a father to me. <coughs> okay. Tracy, time, uh, if I may just, uh, maybe, yeah. maybe, uh, if you allow me, I can just read some messages because a lot of people watching. <coughs> yeah. Can I? Uh, so Nisha Chatterjee is watching. Sophia Hoffman is watching. Uh, Kim Leslie is watching. Arjun Verma is watching. Pramiti Chaudhary is watching from Allahabad. Joyita Bose is watching. Naresh Flute, Jangit, Sadar Pranam, Damini V. Bhatt. Sukanyaji is watching from London, Sukanya Shankar. 
navarun of course is with us anu jayant uh, sukanya ji sister is watching she saying hello sis then bharti krishna pandit i met ravi shankar ji 1971 in new york in lincoln center then angarika khyanath mitra is watching kiran nath uh, vidya ji is watching vidya uh, kumar uh, kumar uh, our dear friend from uh, delhi then zainab devres is watching jane kendall is watching zaina is in turkey turkey all, all the way from there uh, ahira is watching then helen brennan peak is watching it was my husband's and my honor to be very close friends with roop ji and tracy verma and bring roop ji to colorado many times over four decades wonderful sharing tracy hello helen and tim <laughs> uh then zenab De devres is saying wonderful memories uh helen is saying again we will gladly be in the audience at carnegie hall listening to the extremely talented gifted sitaris arjun verma one day in the future yes <laughs> i'm looking forward to that me too i i would love to be there uh, uh sofia is saying such wonderful memories with guruji and with roop ji uh sukanya so ji saying hi little big sis Kiran Nath is saying, "What a power, powerful name, and given by the greatest of great." Uh, Kim Leslie saying, "Hey Arjun Verma." Kiran Nath saying, "I mean, greatest of the great." Uh, so Kanaji is saying, "You are very welcome, Tracy, and thank you for all these memories." Uh, Lavanya ji is watching. Kirti Singh Kabya, she is from Darbanga, uh, music professor. Uh, Shalini Vajpayee ji is watching from Bombay. Anu Jayanti is saying yes. He could even connect with me, and I am so unmusical. <laughs> uh, Sophia is saying amazing story. Anu Jayanti is saying hello, Tracy. K Jane Kendall is saying this is beautiful, Tracy. Uh, Manju Tanwarji is watching from Delhi, and she is saying namaste. So wonderful messages, and uh, it's creating such a wonderful, you know, feeling, and uh, uh, it's like. the whole whole universe coming together and uh, celebrating uh, the life of guruji his sent indeed I i'm not sure if we're still on cuz i'm not hearing you you're not able to hear me yes now i hear you we're on yeah okay. yeah How so sweet to hear from everybody that is just beautiful um I I did want to tell a few more stories that I'm just recalling as we're talking. Yeah. Um I'm remembering when we visited Mahar in India. Um we went to the uh, uh Baba Loudon Khan's house where Guruji studied where um Baba ji was raised, born and raised. and it was just such a beautiful beautiful experience we were there actually when it was the last time that baba baba ji could be there <clears throat> in his life so that was a very special time for us and to see guruji's picture there and hear the staff who, there was one staff member there who was still working there she was a little girl when guruji used to be there so she remembered him and uh and that was really sweet to hear her remembrance her fond remembrances And so it was really a great blessing to be able to be in that beautiful place where he studied devotedly all those years. Yeah. Uh um, I did I did get to see him after he had his triple bypass surgery. And it was really quite amazing that he lived for so long after that. That really must have given him a new lease on life, but I'll tell you he looked just ghastly when we saw him. He was so frail. and so delicate and we we prayed and prayed for him and hoped that he'd pull through and what a great blessing and he pulled through and was able to give many many more years of music for all of us here in the world it's wonderful uh, wonderful of you to come and share all these wonderful wonderful emotions above all you know but not just stories but wonderful emotions and the extraordinary life uh and you having witnessed it was very important that uh, we got we would get this opportunity to speak to you and uh, to get all your experiences recorded because it's going to be there now in the archive and people can watch it and people can you know uh, get to experience a little of what you have experienced what roop ji has experienced with this one of the greatest musicians pandit ravi shankar ji i thank you tracy ji 
focusing and making it possible. My best wishes to you and to Arjun and to Uma. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much. My pronouns. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiji. Thank you so much for coming to our show reflections, sharing your memory of Panditji. And Thank you and you're welcome. Good night. And to the viewers of Pandit Ravi Shankar Music Foundation, there's a very important announcement that we are started online concerts and the waiting is over. So I've got more than 350 males, Gauravda. How amazing. How amazing. But I'm not surprised, Navadan. Yeah. I'm not surprised. And I'm really looking forward. Yeah. Looking forward. This is. Yeah. And everybody. Everybody is very eager to perform on our platform, Pandit Ravi Shankar Music Foundation. Sure. And uh, to the viewers, I would say that tomorrow we are going to start the first episode of Music Forum Next Gen. And the first artist who will be performing tomorrow is a very young, talented artist, Pakhawash player, Sri Adit Deep from Varanasi. It is the first episode tomorrow. And let me tell you, the musicians, they are very much eager to know that is it a free performance or not? No, we are we will be paying remuneration to the musicians who will be performing on our platform. So be sure about that. The other aspect is that there are many questions coming from the musicians who want to perform on our platform that how we can en enter this. So we have already mentioned on our page that you send your performance on our WhatsApp number and also send your biodata to our mail. So young musicians, you are requested to join and perform in the platform given by us and show your talent to the viewers. There was a question that a lot of people are asking that where we can get this music learned. So we are having our institute, Rimpa Ravi Shankar Institute of Musical and Performing Arts in New Delhi, Chanakyapuri. There you can get music learned by, and it has also been mastered by disciples of Pandiji. So you people are welcome who are interested to learn music in Delhi. Till then, goodbye and do join us at 8 p.m. tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Navadan. Thank you, Garuda. Good night. Thank you. Take care. All the best. Bye. Tracy ji, thank you. You're welcome. Thank no, you. Bye. Thank you.